again this morning, seeing what we can find. It's a little overcast this morning, but the tide is out, so who knows? Let's see where some rails might be. Hey, good morning, folks. I want to share with you a fun time I had rec uh, doing photos of the Ridgeways Rail uh, here in Oakland, California at the Arrowhead Marsh. Um, I did the video over a couple of days. Or, you know, the, I, I did actually did the photos over a couple of days uh, because we had some different types of weather and uh, different tidal times and stuff like that. And so I, I did it over a couple of days and I wanted to share with you how I got some of the cool images that I did. Um, from a public, uh, you know, shoreline that uh, here is close to my home. If you look in the highlighted corner of the, or inside the box that I have on the video clip, you'll see a rail running around up in there. And, uh, you know, these birds are really fun to watch. They, they're like a chicken. Uh, they're a, a really like a big bird uh, and like a football with a neck and a head is kind of their shape. So they're, they're pretty cool to watch. But what's even more exciting is that I got to see them because usually they, you know, they stay really hidden in that grass that uh, he's running around next to. And you can see scale wise how, you know, what uh, what size he is compared to, to the habitat he lives in. Once they step inside that grass, you're just not going to see him. Uh, unless you catch a glimpse of the orange beak, but it's really hard to tell when they're in the grass. You hear them all the time making their sounds, but to really get a chance to see them run around, hunt, and poke their heads into little water holes as the tide is out, you know, is, is a fun thing. And I want to share with you how I got some of the images that I did. Uh, you know, firstly, you can see here how far away I am from the the rail. Uh, I'm sitting on a pier and I'm probably 50 feet away. I'm just using a 300 millimeter uh, Canon F4 300 millimeter lens with no image stabilization and I have no in-body uh, image stabilization also. So what I did to help get sharp images uh, from this scene with the low light is I just brought a tripod with me which um, helps keep everything stable while I'm panning around with the bird. I have a ball head on there and it really helps uh, keep everything stable so that when I'm trying to get a shutter speed that will allow me to freeze some of the action in the low light, the the tripod offers a lot of support for that and it's really a helpful tool to have. Um, another, another tip that I'm using uh, I want to share with you is auto ISO. Auto ISO is a very handy feature that's available, you know, I think on most uh, DSLRs. I'm using an EOS R mirrorless Canon, uh, but I know my 5Ds had it also. But, uh, you know, whatever camera system you're using, uh, just scroll through the menu and, you know, under your ISO settings, see if you have an auto ISO option. And what that does is you set the ISO range from, you know, here mine was from 200 to, I think, 1600. Uh, and I set a minimum shutter speed that I wanted. You know, and for this day, uh, I wanted a minimum shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. It's a big bird. He he runs around pretty quick, but he does pause and stop in the water holes uh, and preening himself. So I figured in my mind, 1 250th of a second would be a shutter speed that I could still walk away with some sharp images uh, and you know, not have to crank the ISO up really high because it's low light. You know, uh, I'm at the widest end of my aperture, which is, you know, F4. So auto ISO, what it does is you set a an ISO range in your camera and you set your minimum shutter speed that you want to use. Uh, in my case, it was 1 250th of a second. And the camera changes the ISO to keep that shutter speed. Let me show you some pictures. See, here's one that I got uh, from the rail you just saw running around. He's, you know, standing there in his little water hole, uh, really close to the reeds. And, you know, I, I kind of just have to determine based on the bird size and what you know about the bird, what, what shutter speed is going to work for you um, with low light 
But like I say, 1.250 for the second is one that I figured I could walk away with some shots. I'd have to really time my shots out and watch what he was doing and, you know, get my little bursts in right when I thought he was going to pause and then pick the sharpest out of the cluster of images that I took. But here's a really pretty shot, you know, a uh, little bit of light in there, uh, you know, some reflection. He, he's a little fluffed out right there. It's a really cool looking shot considering how far away it was and considering how uh, the light was, you know, it was a real low light situation. I want to share with you some other techniques also that I use to help get images of this rail. There you go. A little action of that water be good. Preening a little bit. But, but let's talk real quick again about the auto ISO and shutter speeds. You just saw me taking pictures of, or you heard the shutter going off and I made the comment that the bird was preening. Here is that image right here. And what I wanted to share with you about the shutter speed is that you can always crank up your ISO, sure, and get a faster shutter speed on no light. But I would rather take fewer images that are a little bit more calculated if I can at a lower ISO and be much happier with the result. And here's a perfect example. I knew the bird runs around and then stops and then, you know, pokes his head in holes and preens and etc. So I knew one two fiftieth of a second at some point would get me some good pictures. And here's a an example of, of just that. Uh, I could have certainly cranked my ISO up to, you know, something really high and used a faster shutter speed, but I knew that, you know, I wouldn't be happy with the result and so you know, the method that I'm using for this bird worked great. And another thing too, really quickly, you know, if you have image stabilization in your camera or even IBIS, you know, built into your camera body, uh, one two fiftieth of a second is, in this case, would have been just fine hand holding it. Uh, but I didn't have either of those two image stabilization systems and so that's why I made mention earlier in the video that I brought a tripod with me. Um, typically you don't want to go anything under your focal length and shutter speed if you're hand holding an image, uh, hand holding the camera. Um, you know you've got IBIS or image stabilization in your lens then you know you can get away with you know less than the focal length. Uh, you know, using less than the focal length of your lens as your shutter speed and be okay. Uh, let's show some other examples here real quick. Here is a Ridgeway rail right beneath me. He is young and I'm trying to take my extender off to score some full body shots without startling that bird. Take a look and see what we can do. So we've talked about stability and and uh, you know using tripods or in lens image stabilization or even uh, in body image stabilization IBIS. We've talked about auto ISO uh, and now let's talk about real quick some of your camera's AF autofocus options. Uh, this is going to help you eliminate more of those blurry images and those times where your camera just can't seem to lock focus on a bird and it's right in front of you perhaps. Uh, we'll talk about what different AF modes to use in different situations because they'll change depending on where you're shooting the birds at, you know, um, grass or water you know, uh, there's some different options that will help you make sure you keep more images than you throw away. I typically use a single AF point or an expanded AF point when I'm shooting birds. And I'll show you what those uh, terms mean. And I'll put an overlay up on the screen here over the top of this bird right now. And if you look at the bird's eye, that single square over his eye, that is a single AF point, a single autofocus point. The four squares that are lit up around it with boxes in boxes, those are what's called, that diagram is what's called an expanded AF point. All we're talking about here is the single AF point is what I used in taking this photo and it gave me, it gave the camera 
a single spot to focus on on that bird, which was the eye. Now, if I thought the bird was moving around a lot and I couldn't use a single AF point, then I would use what's in the diagram here, what's called an expanded AF point. It just gives the camera a little bit more option to focus on if I couldn't lock on with just the single AF point. Let me give you another example. Here's the same bird, okay, different composition, and I'm going to show you what the single AF point looks like. We just showed the expanded AF point. Now I'm going to overlay it with a single AF point so you can see the difference. See that single square in a square right over the bird's eye? That's a single AF point. Now if you think you know that bird is sitting still or you can keep that camera steady enough with a single AF point on a single spot on that bird then this is the AF selection that I would use. Um, and I did in this case. I used a single AF point because the bird was so close and he wasn't moving around that much. I figured my best chance for a sharp image uh, and being able to focus on the bird's eye was a single AF point. Now if it was a smaller bird or this bird happened to be flailing all around and doing all kinds of crazy you know character antics then I would have probably reverted back to the expanded AF point. So you kind of have to just decide what works best for you with the bird in that particular scene. But single AF point and expanded AF point are two that I use almost all the time. Um, I'll get into another one if you have a mirrorless camera that's really incredible. But these are the two that I use. And I want to show you why this wouldn't be a good choice for me if I was shooting a bird across the marsh. Let me bring up a video clip and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Watch this. There's another rail over there. Gosh, look at that. Turn this camera on. He's over there. Just poking out. I need the extender for him though. And I'm on auto ISO right now. I'm at one one thousandth of a second. Expanded AF point. Auto ISO is giving me ISO 2000 so that I can get a fast shutter speed. They're a really shy, shy bird, and they'll go back in the grass in no time. And they stay where it's nice and dark if they can. They're just a really shy bird. So I showed you that video clip because I wanted you to see a couple things. I wanted you to see how far away I was from the bird, and I wanted you to see just how uh, not practical it would be to try to use a single AF point and hold it on the bird's eye from <laughs> from that distance. It's just not going to happen. That's why your camera AF points, uh, your AF system, there's a lot of different tools in there for you to be able to use to decide which is going to work best for you uh, for the photography you're doing at that time. For me, I didn't want to use a single AF point. I chose to use expanded AF. And I mean, you could just see how from that distance and looking at this picture how expanded was just a much better choice you know you have to decide what's going to work for you during you know your shoot uh, during considering lighting considering bird movement size of the bird etc things like that how visible the bird is you're just going to have to decide what's going to work best for you but knowing these tools are available helps you make better choices and helps you in the end have more fun and keep more photos the last little tip I want to talk about and I don't know if other mirrorless cameras have it but I know you can only use this if you have an electronic viewfinder which you know is in mirrorless cameras I use Canon EOS R and what it's called is uh, 10x magnification directly into the EFV and what this does is it looks kind of like a single AF point but you can magnify it 10 times meaning that box, that single AF point in the viewfinder will be like doubled in size almost and, and it will cover the part of the bird that you want to take a picture of but you can't using a single AF point because it's so small and the bird is so far away or if the bird you're taking a picture of, not in this example, for but like say you're doing a photo of a warbler or something like that and it's in the grass or, or behind some little branches and your camera won't lock focus on that little bird because it's you know there's a couple obstacles in the way you can hit that 10 times magnification in the electronic viewfinder and select just that bird and take a picture of it 
Uh, it's really incredible. It's like, it looks like a single AF point, but it's like super big inside the viewfinder. It's an incredible little feature. Uh, and I said all that to say that this bird up here that I'm showing you now, that's uh, the original size. It's probably 30, I mean, it's probably 40, 40 feet away. And I used that method on photographing this bird. And let me show you uh, really quickly the final image. I'm going to zoom in here on this and let you see first, you know, here's here's the, the image itself. But we're going to get even closer. And I don't know how well it's going to show in the video. But I want you to see how sharp the eye is on this bird from 40, you know, 40, 50 feet away. I mean, using this feature in the mirrorless camera is really incredible. Uh, and I have gotten some great results with it. I don't know how well it'll transfer over onto the video. But it's a really cool technique and it's, you know, if you've got a Canon mirrorless or you've got another mirrorless camera, look and see if you can do 10x magnification directly into the viewfinder. You have to be, uh, you have to select single AF point in order to go to 10x magnification in the viewfinder, in the electronic viewfinder. But your cameras may have some variation of it. It may just be called something different, uh, you know, but it's really a great feature. So I appreciate you watching this video. It's kind of a back and forth between some video footage and some explanation. Hopefully you guys are able to pull a little something out of it. Hopefully I communicated well enough in the video to help you understand some basic tools to help you walk away with more images that you're happy with instead of throwing your camera in the creek because the camera won't focus or the bird's too far away or, you know, the light is too low. These are some pretty simple techniques to recap stability, either with a tripod or image stabilization, uh, auto ISO, and understanding the AF points in your camera using single point AF or expanded point AF. Or if you have a mirrorless, try that new 10X uh, magnification directly in the viewfinder. It's incredible. Follow me on Instagram at insightful underscore imagery, Facebook, insightful imagery, uh, Patreon, I'll have some free downloads for you if you subscribe to me on Patreon. You guys, take care. InsightfulImagery.com. Check out my images. Thanks for watching.